I could call it ninja communication, but ninjas are pretty violent, so I went with brave. But it's the idea that preparation makes you feel like not panicked. It's like if you're Bruce Lee, you don't think about walking down dark alleys like this might be scary. Like, I'm Bruce Lee. I hope something happens. <laughs> I hope something happens. It's like this would give me a real opportunity. You know, uh, you know, if, if, you know, if you're an amazing, you know, if you're an amazing shortstop, you're thinking, hit the ball to me, not hit the ball to somebody else. It's like once you've got the skill set, you're like, I want, I'm ready for this. Preparation meets opportunity, and I'm ready for success. I'm ready for success. So that's what I want to get, have you is go, I've got four or five tools from Dan. I'm ready to start practicing them and get successful at them. So, uh, <clears throat> so your body won't lie to you, and your head is trying to lie to you about what you're feeling. And, and feelings are so foundational to our communication, you have to accurately identify them. Because where we're going in the next like 40 minutes is to send an iMessage where I'm communicating the feeling that I'm having and where I'm listening for the feeling and bypassing the content of the junior high kid that's out of control or the high school kid that's out of control. We're going to talk about that in a minute. But you have to be aware of feelings because if you're not, they will own you <laughs> if you don't own them. <clears throat> Number 11, <clears throat> uh, number 10, actually. The more you hide your feelings from yourself and others, the less alive you are. Anytime you hide a significant feeling <clears throat> from someone, you create a hidden agenda and you block communication and growth with that person in that area. I don't know how many times it's happened to you, but I'll be in my congregation and people will be like, yeah, I don't, uh, I don't like them. You, you don't like somebody else in church? Yeah, No. I'm not sure that's allowed. I, you know, let me look into that. But I don't think that's allowed. <laughs> we, have a, we made something up. You don't have to, I, I love you, but I don't have to like you. I, I'm not sure where that is either. <laughs> yeah, that's right. uh, a like is our form of our affection for people, our acceptance for people. It's the practical of the love. I can say I love somebody in theory and treat them very, very horribly. So anytime we hide a significant feeling, we create a hidden agenda, we block communication. That's why we have to say these things out loud. It takes as much energy, number 12, some of us really need to believe this. It takes as much energy to hide and deny a feeling as it does to work through them. Yeah. That's key right there. It takes as much energy to hide it and deny it as it does to work through it. So you might as well invest the energy into working through it. Um, skipping down to 16, <clears throat> I th- you know, turn the other cheek. Others may have an attacking style, but I will not attack. I might be the target, but I will not target another. That is just a core value you kind of have to take on. And what it looks like, if I could just illustrate it for you, is I've been in conversations where somebody is taking the deepest, most personal shot at me they can. <laughs> like they're, they're pulling up an old, an old uh, thing. I've confided in them. They've pulled up you know, a part when I was vulnerable and in the middle of a fight, they're bringing it out as a weapon against me. Boy, you want to press my buttons. That's like, woohoo! That, you know, that does it. But when you have this core value of like, I will not attack somebody else. I might be targeted, but I won't attack. And at least in this place, I'm, I'm going to cultivate turning the other cheek. And so... Practically, what that might look like is somebody says this very destructive, very humiliating, incredibly embarrassing thing, whatever, and your response is, oh, that really hurt. I'm really hurt. It seems like you said that purposely just to hurt me. If that was a plan, it worked. Does that really hurt? Not reacting, just saying, that hurt. That hurt. Not, you don't have to hack them back. You don't have to just say it more and more, but just let them know, like, that thing you just, that, that, you know, that shotgun blast you just clicked off, it met, hit the target. Now, we're not used to doing that. We're actually going, miss me. You know, here's one back at you. You know, that's kind of how we, we do it. And um, it's like jumping up with a bullet or something. But uh, that's so not our style. But when, you, when you're present, when you're living with brave communication, you're able to say that, you know, that, that found its mark. That was really, really painful. I'm feeling disconnected from you. I'm feeling frustrated. <laughs> Sending those I messages. <clears throat> Moving along here. The truth may be hard. It doesn't have to be harsh. That's 17. Number 18, take responsibility for your feelings. Believe it or not, with grace and practice, you can most often choose your response to circumstances. Number 19, if our feelings control our actions, it's because we've abdicated our responsibility. 
I did a tricky thing on the tape where I split apart the word response and ability. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's nice. Responsibility. <laughs> That's the email humor right there. Um, number 22. Crisis, pain, and loss are not optional in this life. If you close yourself to these, you close your heart to an opportunity, joy, and love. These are experienced in the same spot in your heart. And God often uses them to shape us. How, how do I know that? I, I know it because, I mean, partly because of my kids. Um, I got married later in life, and, and um, I have, uh, uh, I'm not 53. I'm not Benning's dad, as some people have thought. Um, but <laughs> video announcements. Thank you. Is that your son? Yeah. That hurt. Okay, that hurt. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. That was really brutal. <laughs> so, but I have a, a four-year-old and a three-year-old and a 16-month-old uh, there. And um, I will peek in at the kids in nursery. Macy just started three-year-old class or whatever else. And I'll just come by the door and hide and peek in at my daughter. And I can feel the love. It is a yeah. pain yeah. in my soul. A delicious, amazing, marvelous pain in my soul. I can walk. I can. I can be at work and um, and just get lost in how Aiden is so excited about the yo-yo that he got and from the treasure box. And last night he got up in the middle of the night, woke me up at four, uh, to said because I didn't get to say goodnight to him because uh, I got home from work late. So uh, I didn't get to say goodnight to him. I said, "Hi, son. What's going on?" He has his head on my chest and he says, um, "I I wanted to say hi and show you my yo-yo." So, so we got up in, in the dark. He goes and finds this yo-yo on a string and shows it to me, and, and I'm like, this is amazing. This is amazing. He's driving me, he's driving me crazy to keep me up, but it's amazing. It's like, I, I feel that pain is in the same exact place. And so I, I know that, the same, that this, this spring, this place where our love and our joy and our affection comes from, is the same place where our hurt and our crisis comes, comes from, because when I love them so much, I know how powerful they are. I start thinking, if something happened to you, don't know what I would do. I don't know if I'd survive. Now, I know by God's grace you would, and some of us have gone through very, very difficult things like that. And I'm not meaning to touch that. I'm just saying that when you start hiding and shielding yourself from pain and loss, you will cut down on the joy and happiness of your life because they flow from the same fountain of your soul. And when you say, I'm not going to do pain, and I'm not going to do crisis, and I'm not going to do loss, you are in effect saying, I'm not going to do deep joy, I'm not going to do happiness. I'm not going to do connection. So these tools will help keep you alive <laughs> and feel even more alive in your relationships and your connections with each other. Uh, feelings change by being uh, shared and understood by God or another, by getting a different perspective on a situation like new information or a new belief, by praying about them. Our feelings are part of us, which is, is being sanctified. Sometimes believing a lie damages our emotions. You all know this. And God may work immediately and supernaturally, or he might work over time, or have you work through them the old-fashioned way by being expressed, by expressing them and being understood, or by renewing your mind in his word. And they also change by being reflected upon through journaling, poetry, and self-talk. Listen, some of us want our emotional world to change through supernatural miracle. And I'm, I just, when I, when I look at, uh, it happens. I mean, it does happen. But when I look at scripture, it's, that is one way God does it, but primarily does it through relationship, the body of Christ healing one another, bringing respect, bringing covering, bringing life to one another. In other words, if we're not careful in in charismatic, supernatural environments like this, we will think that supernatural experience is God's plan A and that people are God's plan B. And I'm just saying in Scripture, I think they're both plan A, that God gets just as much joy out of a miraculous uh, feeling emdectomy, if you will, (laughs) as he does when in a small group of men and women who've learned to, to love each other, to connect with each other, to respect each other, have called out the gold in each other. <clears throat> I don't think that's any lesser plan on God's part. We do feel that. We're like, I want this thing to go away now, today, and if it doesn't, then I'll have to go to counseling or have to talk to somebody, and that'll feel less important or real because we value the supernatural so much. And I just want to break that off you and just say, hey, they, they are both valuable in God's book, both really valuable. Oh, you doing all right? We are... Uh, I've talked for like an hour and five minutes nonstop. Seemed like 20, I know, it's it's uncanny. 